I'm Tom Patton for Aero TV, and my guest this 20 minutes is Larry Riddle from L3, and we're going to talk about the link system, which is something that you know, we, we started getting teased about this about a year ago, Larry. Uh, yeah, Lynx yeah. is coming. Yeah, yes. Lynx is here. Tell us about it. Oh, it's like you said, we uh, went out and teased at Oshkosh of last year to give the industry and end user a little bit of a taste of what was to come. Uh, obviously, people have long awaited now that we have a full uh, TSO authorizations for all mm -hmm. of our products and primarily 90% of all the AML STC uh, paperwork and certifications approved. We're, we're here, we're launched, it's, it's revealed, it's out. We've got introduced the first touchscreen, a multi-link transponder, mm -hmm. which combines a UAT a 978 and a 1090 ES. So you get all the benefits of one having the ADSB benefits, but also giving you more, more bang for your buck, if you will. You talk about uh, a touch screen, basically a touch screen transponder. Correct. What was the impetus for putting that touch screen functionality into the box that goes in the panel for a transponder? That's a, that's a great question. It's almost like you're staging up these questions purposely for me to, to lead in with these great answers. <laughs> I just got to tee them up and you can knock uh, them out of the park. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. But with obviously with the today with our phones and our iPads that we all have, everybody's getting used to the touchscreen. You're in your car, you've got a touchscreen. You're swiping left, you're swiping right. So one of the things that we had thought of a few years ago was like, hey, this is really going to be the future because everybody's expecting that. And mm -hmm. we were seeing that also through um, other business opportunities that we had in the display market with other BGA OEMs that touchscreens were going to be the driver over the next several years, that mm -hmm. this is the technology that was going to be placed on. So we're like, hey, why not on this transponder product? and allowing us to give far more uh, features and capabilities to a product by, again, finding another page to swipe to versus a click of the button. So really, it's the expectation that the consumer has. It makes the next best thing. Some guy's driving his car, he's already swiping on his vehicle when he gets in his airplane. Why can't he do that there? Mm -hmm. So it really was just the next logical choice for what the market expects. When I've talked with folks about touchscreen technology in airplanes, the subject that always comes up is turbulence and getting your, your finger in the right spot. Um, is there a way that, that the user of the link system has that will help them avoid having to you know, touch the wrong thing? Well, that's another good question. With, with the, uh, the, the touchscreen here, unlike your, your iPad where it's, it's a light touch, mm -hmm. it's a much more deliberate okay. on our Lynx 9000, specifically for that case. And also on the bezel of the 9000, you have an anchoring point too, much like have you seen on other displays where when you are in those turbulence, you can anchor your thumb down mm -hmm. and go and, and do the appropriate selections without you know, pressing the wrong one. Talk us through some of the components of the system. Obviously there's the, the panel mounted uh, transponder, but there's a back office to it as well. Well, the back office, it's all, the back office is really all in one box. Mm -hmm. All of our solutions offer fully compliant embedded GPS. Um, again, you've got your GPS, you've got your UAT capability, and then you have your 1090 ES capability, mm -hmm. but it's all in one box. Which makes for a much easier installation. It makes for a much easier installation, and it takes a lot of the guesswork out of, mm -hmm. you know, today folks are like, well, hey, I'm flying, you know, a 1967 aircraft X, and I've got avionics here from brand Y. I've got another set of avionics from here, mm -hmm. and my GPS is this. Is my GPS even compliant? Right. Well, I got a WASC compliant GPS, but is that compliant? So you have to go through a lot of flow charts for people to determine what they exactly need. And with the Lynx family of products, it's a very succinct and autonomous selection to go, it's all right here, it's all in one box. I don't care what else plays in the panel. You just put in a Lynx and you're ready to rock and roll. When, and, and we're talking with a lot of, of the equipment manufacturers about the whole ADSB mandate and the fact that it, it, we heard this morning that there were 1150 days left before. Doesn't the, sound like much time, does it? Doesn't it? sound like a no, lot of time at all isn't. and a lot of airplanes that have to be converted. Yep. So where does this product fall in, in, in the spectrum of the, the, the aviation community? What's your target market? Well, target market is obviously part 23, part 27. Okay. So, and it's it's really again for that. The nice thing about the Lynx family, it can be the pilot that just comes in and says, "I just want to be legal." Mm -hmm. You know, I fly for my ranch, I fly in for maintenance. I just want to be legal. So he's going to want 
or she will want to spend the least amount of dollars possible just to be compliant to the mandate. Mm -hmm. Then you'll have the other folks as you step up through the Lynx product family that want to get more features and benefits mm -hmm. by scaling up through the product line. And that's where eventually the 9,000 plus comes in where you can actually get active traffic into the box. So on the 9,000, and that's an interesting point because a lot of these they will have all the active traffic and, and, and this is going to be in a, in a fairly small uh, display to be able to see. So what is it that actually can be seen on the uh, on the 9,000? Well, on the, on the 9,000 display, you'll obviously one, get your TISB traffic, mm -hmm. you know, through your ADSB complement. Right. But then you're also going to have the ability to option up on the 9,000 family line by getting a 9,000 plus. The 9,000 plus allows you to add a active traffic antenna, mm -hmm. which now you can get active traffic, much like how you could do with our other legacy uh, family of uh, collision avoidance. Mm -hmm. So really you have a what we'd like to dub a belt and suspenders approach where you've got a complete complement from the ADSB traffic information being fed in the cockpit, but then you also have an active traffic mm -hmm. element because we all know there's going to be those cones where you might not have active traffic available, but with what we have, mm -hmm. it's going to provide it. Is it a change for a pilot who might have been flying an airplane that has, is it more accustomed to a larger display to be able to come down to something that's on something the size well, of a you know, standard box? That's another, that's another great question. And another, another one of these things, again, we go back and look at our iPhones, our Androids, and we have, we're becoming more and more accustomed to a smaller display. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go back to the day when you, your phone first had an AML CD, you're like, holy cow, but you were just happy to have something. Right. Um, the display, we've had some people like, oh, it's too small, but then when people actually get a chance to fly it and see it, they're like, oh, this is perfect. You know, it's relatively the same size, if not a little bigger than some phones that you're used to. So mm -hmm. people already have that customization to looking at a smaller display and then finding the right information that they want to have on that display available to them. So we think we've got a nice uh, sweet spot with the overall display size. How are you finding the education process for the pilot community that is faced with that 2020 deadline to, to try to convince them that it might be they might be better served to get in the line now and get upgraded as opposed to waiting for well, the deadline. That I have, I have, there's lots of answers to that. And certainly when you just go and you say, you know, all the avionics shops are all, they're ready. They're, they're right. poised, they're waiting for everybody to come to their shops. And much like to the countdown that you said is how many days now, 11, what? Mm -hmm. You know, 1100 of anything. It's like, it doesn't sound like much, especially when you're like people, that means you have to schedule now. You couldn't roll right. your plane into a shop today. You're a couple months out already to book and even get in line. So some of these folks have got to get educated on, you need to start one, get in line with the product and lock down your price today. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, there's lots of things going on, not only on the end of the product line prices, but also with avionics shops. At some point, avionics shops are going to start saying, hey, look, you know, it's getting busy. Yeah. You know, it's getting busy. So I think the market is getting educated slowly on what, what's real. Mm -hmm. But let's face it, everybody thinks, well, we have to comply by 2020. It's 2019. Yeah. You know, it's it's December 31st, 2019. Right. So it's <laughs> not that it's not that far it, away. It's not that far away. The other thing that, that we heard this morning from both Paula Dirks and Pete Bunce was just the, the benefits of having all of this technology, all of this information in the cockpit. How is your education process at L3 for again the person who's going to be the end user to say, look, this is really something that's going to benefit you at the end of the day and make your flying safer. Well, there's going to be some people that can say, I don't care about the benefits. It's a mandate. It turns me off. But again, that's where we have the minimally compliant solution. Say, so we have something for you. But for those folks that say, hey, this is wonderful. I get free weather. Now I'm able to get traffic that can be pumped in to my cockpit so mm -hmm. I can finally see what air traffic control sees and have a better awareness of what is around me. I think it really, the, the safety element and the situational awareness benefits really pump up the wow quotient for people to say, it's it's worth, it's money well spent. Yeah. So the ADS-B just isn't a mandate, it really is an overlying thing that it's gonna improve safety. Mm -hmm. So I think once people realize that, it's gonna, it's gonna happen quick. Well, and I think part of the other part of it as well is that people talk about some of the really high-end systems that have been available up until now that were subscription services and you got weather and you got those things, but 
this is something that's going to be, that come into your cockpit just for the price of putting the box in the pan. Okay. And I think the few times that I've gotten to fly with, with a system that shows all that, I can't imagine going out and flying without weather in my cockpit. Oh, it, you know, it's just like, it's just uh, as an example, motorcycle helmet laws. Mm -hmm. You know, you get so used to wearing a helmet, and then we say, hey, you don't need to wear a helmet anymore. You sort of go out there and you sort of feel naked. It, I see the situational awareness of having active traffic the same way. Mm -hmm. Now, when you didn't have it, you didn't know it, it's like you didn't miss it because you never had it. Right. But once you get that in the cockpit, mm -hmm. and then for some reason it goes away again, you feel naked. You feel yeah. it's like, oh, I'm, you're blind. You're flying blind. And once, you know, with our Skywatch product line, that's where a lot of the folks were like, I had no idea there was that much traffic out there. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff that you just can't see with the naked eye. So that was, again, the safety benefits of ADS-B, I think, are going to be extremely powerful once people realize, I've got that much traffic around me. Mm -hmm. And particularly in any place where it might be a little bit busy. I live in Florida. There's always a lot of airplanes around. Yeah. Um, well, in busy, busy, uh, absolutely you have traffic. And, but people, when they go into a busy airport, they're expecting lots of traffic. Right. It's really the the people that get surprised when they're flying out of their local field mm -hmm. and they're surprised that like there's that many airplanes coming into this place you know just even yeah. if it's one or two that you're like i had no idea they were even there exactly what else is happening at uh, at l3 what else can you talk about this afternoon oh well we uh, in conjunction with the uh, the links and the fact that we just had our tso mm -hmm. uh, authorization uh, receipt here uh, last week and our amlc uh, amlstc is online we're celebrating and we're providing free antennas and installation kits to the first 1,000 uh, Lynx models that are ordered and delivered in 2015. So again, we're helping to stimulate the market. We're giving people an opportunity to help uh, essentially take advantage of a, a significant cost savings. And L3 is saying, hey, your GPS and L-band antennas on us and the install kits. Buy the box and start enjoying the benefits of ADS-B. And not they can they can't do it soon enough. Yeah, and that's what we're just you know again you know you know everybody talks about a mandate and we're trying to bring a product that does more than just satisfy mm -hmm. a mandate. But again, bringing situational awareness to the cockpit, bringing really cool features and advantages that make it just safer. You're a company that's been around a long time, and I'm going to kind of go off the ADSB track for just a moment as we wrap up here. But how are you seeing the overall industry as as the economy continues to start to recover. Are things picking up pretty much across the board? Well, I think at any time you see a little bit of, you know, ebb and flows with with how things are going. Uh, certainly, I think with AEA kicking off, I think the it's record attendance, at least for a while, it's, mm -hmm. it's nice, it's obviously well attended. So these are the nice positive signs <laughs> that I see and like, hey, people are really excited, they're asking questions. The market, the industry is becoming more engaged. I think we're climbing out of the, the bottom part of the curve on what we've you know, unfortunately, I've had to live through for the last several years. Are you seeing at, at your booth more serious uh, potential buyers and fewer just, okay, this is cool, I want to look, but not this week? Absolutely. Oh, I, well, I'll tell you what. We ran out of brochures by lunchtime today, and we thought we brought plenty. So we're actually having more <laughs> overnighted <laughs> in. So well, that's another sign of people coming in. It's like, hey, they're ready to buy. Right. I mean, people are grabbing brochures, they're getting educated, and our booth has been busy, which is good. You know, and if you look around, even here, all the booths are busy. And it's all good when everybody wins. You know, the market's big enough for everybody to have success in, which is nice. So, it's fun. It's fun, and it is fun, and, and we're out of time. Oh, that was quick. Well, good, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> <laughs> it obviously wasn't for you. <laughs> well, no, it was actually, it, it was. And it's, it's always great to talk to you, Larry. Thank you very much for taking some time out to talk with us about a really interesting product, something that looks like it's unique in the marketplace, and hopefully you'll do real well with it. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Aero News Network's coverage of the 58th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Dallas, Texas, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. Now certified, Aspen Avionics Single Band ADS-B, ATX-100, and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Avidyne provides innovative avionics solutions for general aviation aircraft, 
including the IFD540 and IFD440 FMS GPS NAVCOMs with Geofill, Hybrid Touch, and full ADS-B capability. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, NAVCOM, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. The IntelliFlight 2100 Digital Flight Control System is the perfect complement to today's integrated flight decks and is certified on the King Air and Conquest. It will now interface to a single EFIS and a mid-continent SAM 302 unit for a low-cost, complete panel upgrade. Contact us at www.genesis-aerosystems.com. An interactive links application is available in the Apple and Android app stores. This free app is a virtual simulation of the Lynx NGT9000 touchscreen cockpit display that lets pilots interact with the unit as if they had a real system in their hands. The app covers the entire Lynx family of ADS-B products, including features and options to help customers decide which Lynx model is right for their needs. True Blue Power Advanced Lithium Ion Main Chip Batteries feature proprietary nanophosphate technology. They deliver three times the energy density and are more than 40% lighter than lead acid or NICAD alternatives. RTCA tested, FAA certified, available to OEMs today. NAVWORKS makes ADS-B affordable. Certified or experimental, NAVWORKS gives you high-quality next-gen avionic solutions that dramatically increase your situational awareness. Check us out now on the web at www.navworks.com. The debate is no longer about upgrading GA aircraft with next-gen. It's about financing it. The next-gen GA fund is about doing just that. Find out more at www.nextgenfund.com.